Okay, so we're on chapter four, and this is from a different character. I mean, we're starting the book, so we don't really know any of these guys. Um, we know from the description of the book, though, that um, Aldo has some anger management issues. So we're going to hear from Aldo um, Braff, or Braff, I'm not entirely sure. The first time I saw Kiana, I knew she was going to be a pain in my neck. It was the first day of school, the marshmallow roast. She was the new girl, so I was nice. I took a pencil, speared a marshmallow, and made room for her around the fire. Talk about rude. She refused to take it because it was unsanitary. That's the last time I try to be a gentleman. You know those bossy types who think they know everything? That's Kiana. One time I'm in the cafeteria when she comes up to me and tells me to stop kicking the candy machine. If I'm kicking the candy machine, I'm doing it for a very good reason. Who put her in charge of the world? She grabs my arm and hauls me away from the machine. What's wrong? I wanted a Zagnut, I tell her in fury. It gave me a Mounds. So? Man, she really isn't from around here. At Greenwich Middle School, everybody knows two things about me. One, when I want something, nothing stands in my way. And two, I don't like coconut. I look around. There's dead silence in the cafeteria. But nobody's eyes are on me. They know better than to get between me and a Zagnut bar. All except Kiana. Maybe all Californians are like that. They can't mind their own business. She asks, and if you keep on kicking it, will the Zagnut come out? Maybe, I say stubbornly. She shrugs, then go ahead. But here's the thing. I don't want to kick it anymore. She's ruined it for me. The worst part is she's an SCS-8, so I can never get away from her. We spend the whole day in room 117 except for lunch in the cafeteria and phys ed, which is in the gym with a couple of other classes. The only surefire place to avoid her is in the boys' room. She hasn't followed me in there, so far. Our teacher, Mr. Kermit, is probably in his 50s, but he looks about 900. Actually, he looks like he's dead already, hunched over his desk, his eyes half-closed. He never moves a muscle. It's hard to tell if he's even breathing. I'm amazed he isn't swinging from the light fixture for all the coffee the guy drinks. Mostly, he's working on a really complicated crossword puzzle. He hates my guts. At least, I think he does. All the teachers in this dump have it out for me, so why should he be any different? He's dumb, too. He doesn't even realize that we all call him Ribbit. There's this nut job in our class, Mateo Hendrickson. He pointed out that the only Kermit he ever heard of was Kermit the Frog. Turns out, Mateo's a fan of the Muppets. Not just Star Trek, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Halo, and every comic book ever printed. Anyway, a nickname was born. Every morning when the teacher walks in, late as usual, we all start ribbiting. Ribbit. 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 Mr. Kermit doesn't even notice. Either that, or he thinks it's a compliment. As a teacher, he stinks. Not that I've had any good ones. He never gives lessons. In fact, he hardly ever speaks out loud. He just passes around these stupid worksheets all day long. Boring doesn't even begin to describe it. With a normal teacher, if you don't do the work, you get in trouble. Not Ribbit. He acts like he couldn't care less if we do his worksheets or not. I've turned in every assignment and he's never graded a single one or handed it back, Kiana complains. What is he doing with them? Maybe he's eating them, I suggest. He's weird enough. She rolls her eyes at me. She's annoying, but it's not like the other kids in SCSA are any better. There's Parker Elias, who has to be the dumbest person in the whole school. Remember the kid in first grade who, when he got picked to read aloud, everybody else wanted to drink bleach? Well, Parker still reads that way today. One word at a time. At the speed of molasses sounding out every letter. This is the idiot they give a special driver's license to. No one is safe. There's Barnstorm Anderson, super jock. Super jerk would be more like it, but I guess he's both. He's an unstoppable running back, an amazing point guard, and a lights out pitcher, which is why the school gives him an automatic get out of jail free card. That makes me mad. Why should scoring touchdowns mean you get special treatment? But here's the thing. 
last spring, Barnstorm blew out his knee. He's on crutches now, banned from sports for a whole year, and by that time, he won't be in middle school anymore. So all the teachers have suddenly started to notice that the last time he turned in a homework assignment was never. That's the kind of person who lands in our class. Like Elaine Ostrover, who sits in the back row. She has to be six foot two and as solid as an oak tree. She hardly ever opens her mouth, but when she does, her voice comes out a, a low rumble, like a subwoofer. Kiana asks me about her. That's Elaine, I reply. Rhymes with pain. She frowns. Everybody says that. Rhymes with pain. What does it mean? You don't want to mess with Elaine, I advise her seriously. Last year, she headbutted this kid down the stairs because he was looking at her funny. Wiped out like 15 people. The line outside the nurse's office stretched halfway to the cafeteria. If that's not pain, I don't know what is. Kiana checks out Elaine's head which looks like one of those giant statues on that island from the cover of our World Geography textbook. She has to reg register her head as a deadly weapon with the FBI, I put in. Kiana skewers me with a sharp glance, so I say, well, not really, but she definitely tore the door off one of the bathroom stalls and used it to crush the laminating machine, I add. I mean, I wasn't there, but everybody knows it. You're scared of her, Kiana decides. I'm not scared. I can handle Elaine, rhymes with pain. If you don't say the full name, it increases your chances of being the next victim. I just don't want to get in trouble for fighting, that's all. She nods, because you're the big expert at not getting in trouble. By the time I realize that I'm mad at her for saying that, she's on the other side of the room, and the chance to yell at her is lost forever. Raheem Barclay is supposed to be this amazing artist, although all I ever, I've ever seen him do is doodle. I guess his doodles are pretty good if you're into that kind of thing. He drew one of Ribbit that's a dead ringer for our teacher. The sunken cheeks and dark circles around the eyes. Just the right amount of gray in the thinning hair. Raheem blew one part of it. He drew the coffee mug too big, almost the size of a trash barrel. Maybe that's how he ended up in SCS8, which isn't exactly for geniuses. It doesn't help that Raheem's stepdad is in a rock band. They practice all night, so Raheem sleeps most of the day. One day, Mateo welcomes me to class with a whole story in this deep, throat-clearing gibberish that sounds a lot like he's trying to spit out a bug he swallowed by mistake. I don't appreciate being messed with, especially when I'm not even sure how I'm being messed with. What did you say? I demand. It's a Klingon greeting, Mateo explains cheerfully. It means, may you die well. My eyes widen. You want me to die? The Klingons are a warlike race, Mateo says quickly. Dying in battle is an honor. They love that. But I don't. From now on, if you've got anything to say to me, say it in English, not some phony language. Klingon is not phony, Mateo cuts me off, outraged. It may have started out on Star Trek, but it's turned into a legitimate language with a dictionary and an alphabet. There are even regional accents, depending on which part of the Klingon home world you came, come from. In the South, for example, he keeps talking, lecturing, clueless that my blood is boiling, and the other kids are laughing, like it's a big joke that this little creep is making fun of me. What is the matter with you? I shout at them. Doesn't anybody have my back? Kiana steps forward, struggling to keep a straight face. She reaches for my arm. Aldo, it's the last straw, that this California girl, who isn't even from around here, thinks I'm the entertainment? A soupy fog swirls around my head, tinged with orange, until I can actually feel the heat from it. I've got to get out of here before I explode, leaving bone fragments and bits of skin all over the walls of room 117. I hate this class. I pick up my backpack and hurl it through the open door, just as Mr. Kermit walks into the room. The heavy bag misses his head by about a quarter of an inch. At that point, I'm so mad, I don't even care. In my white, hot haze, it would make no difference to me if the backpack knocks the teacher's block off and I get suspended, expelled, and banished from the town. I do notice, through my rage, that Rivet doesn't flinch, not even when I storm past him, slamming the door behind me hard enough to raise the school off its foundation. And just like that, I'm alone in the hall, barely sure how I even got there. I slam my fist into a locker. 
it hurts, but I hope it hurts the locker even more. The locker is attached to the wall, and the wall is part of the school, and it's the school's fault that I'm so mad. I hit it a few more times, with an open hand, because that hurts a bit less. I don't feel better exactly. It's more like every blow lets off a little more steam, so the pressure inside my head goes down. I'm still ticked off, but I can live with it. I slump against the lockers, breathing hard. The guidance counselors say I have an anger management problem. They don't know what they're talking about. I managed to get angry better than anybody else in the whole school. No problem. The door of room 115 opens, and this lady walks up to me. At first, I think she could be another eighth grader. That's how young she looks. But no, she's definitely an adult. And the way she takes hold of my wrist, gentle but with authority, screams, Teacher. I've never seen her before, so she must be new. Come with me. She knocks on the door of SCS 8. Mr. Kermit, I shoulder my backpack and stand behind her. We wait at the door, but there's no answer. He's probably in the middle of a puzzle, I offer in a subdued voice. Puzzle, she echoes, like a crossword. Ribbit, uh, Mr. Kermit is really into them. She knocks again and then opens the door. It sticks a little and she has to put her shoulder into it. I guess I slammed it really hard. She leads me inside. Kiana is looking right at me. I feel myself starting to get mad again, but only for a second. It doesn't usually happen twice in a row. Mr. Kermit, I'm Emma Fountain. The woman introduces herself. I have the class next door. So far this year, not a single thing has gotten a reaction out of Ribbit. That streak ends here. The puzzle forgotten, he rises to his feet really slowly never taking his eyes off her. They're practically bugging out of his head. He blurts, I'd know you anywhere. She smiles, which makes her seem even younger. Mom said to tell you hi, but that's not why I'm here. She indicates me. Is this your student? Mr. Kermit looks blank. It, it hits me. He doesn't have a clue. Even though I nearly took his head off with my backpack 90 seconds ago, my own teacher doesn't know me from Jack the Ripper. Of course it's your student, Kiana pipes up. It's Aldo. Well, he's making a lot of noise in the hall, Miss Fountain announces. That's not being a bucket filler. Mr. Kermit goggles. A what? A bucket filler is someone loving and caring who fills other people's invisible buckets with good wishes and positive reinforcement that make them feel special. She regards Aldo disapprovingly. Someone who creates a disturbance and makes it impossible for other children to learn is not a bucket filler. That's a bucket dipper. Suddenly, I realize what she's talking about. It's from this picture book that's supposed to teach little kids to be nice to each other. It's really big in about the first grade. It's an elementary school thing, Mr. Kermit, Kiana supplies helpfully. Just because this is middle school doesn't mean we shouldn't treat one another with respect, Miss Fountain says earnestly. It worked for my kindergarten class last year, and we should have higher expectations for children who are even older. Right, Mr. Kermit? I wait for our teacher to give her the brush off. Good old Ribbit could brush off World War III, but for some reason, he doesn't. With great effort, he tears his eyes off her and swivels to me. Were you dipping? I stare at my sneakers. I guess. Mr. Kermit turns back to Miss Fountain. You look just like your mother. She smiles. I'll take that as a compliment. To me, she says, you should apologize to your classmates, too. You wasted their learning time as well as your own. Sorry. I mumble, you know, about the learning time. Relax, Raheem draws. Who learns? Thank you, Mr. Kermit, Miss Fountain says uncertainly. I'll give my mother your regards. She backs out of the room, shutting the door quietly behind her. Weird lady, Barnstorm puts in, waving a crutch dismissively. All that bucket filler stuff, like we're six years old. Hey, Mr. Kermit shoots him a sharp glance. Miss Fountain is not weird. She's a teacher. Can't she be both? Raheem wonders out loud. Kiana won't let it drop. She's not just bossy, she's nosy too, and the combination makes her like a bloodhound. 
What gives, Mr. Kermit? What's the deal with you and Miss Fountain? For the first time all year, he actually looks annoyed. Did I or did I not distribute worksheets? A paper airplane does a loop-the-loop -loop in front of him. There's a chorus of ribbits, including one from Elaine that sounds like it came from the underworld. Parker chimes in, Face it, Mr. K. You've barely looked away from your puzzle since school started, but the minute she shows up, you hit the ceiling. She's your kryptonite, Mateo puts in. Diana snaps her fingers. It's her mom, right? You and Miss Fountain's mother used to be a thing. Mr. Kermit, who couldn't even be riled by a roaring bonfire in his wastebasket, picks up his crossword puzzle, rips it into a million pieces, stomps on them, and stalks out. Now, even though I can't stand the guy, at that moment, I actually relate to him a little bit. He may be the worst teacher in the world, but we have something in common. He has anger management problems, too.